Dear Jolan, I'm a 14-year-old girl, and like many people my age, this is when we start to develop theories and ideas about the world, when we start to ask questions. It's incredibly hard to get the words from my head onto the computer screen, but I'll try. I cannot even begin to explain how this entire story has affected my life. I would just like to say thank you in the most thankful way. Good job. To have such courage, knowing that standing up for what you believe in is the most, well, noble way to be grateful. I hope I'm making sense. To say thank you for everything is such an incredible understatement. I could go on forever about how we only have one planet and how people like you are going to be our saviors, but if I started, I could never finish. Yours in great admiration, Nina. Good morning. My name is Jola Miller. I'm a director, cinematographer and photographer from down the road. A couple of months ago, I was grateful to finally finish a project that's taken me three years to complete in the form of an independent feature documentary called Unearthed. Unearthed investigates fracking, a very controversial issue in the United States where fracking was developed in order to understand what fracking could mean for the Karoo in South Africa and many other countries currently considering its implementation. Since completion, I've been really honoured and humbled to receive letters like those from Nina every day. But I can promise you that it wasn't always like that. In fact, this time last year, if you told me that I was going to see that letter, I would have laughed at you. Because this time last year, I was completely lost at sea. And by lost at sea, I mean lying on the office floor, crying, looking at the ceiling with tears running down my cheeks, trying to understand why this project happened to me and trying to figure out how I was going to tell my producer and my editor that that glaring X on the calendar on the wall marking the deadline for the film, that I wasn't going to make it. I was terrified. You know, after three years of international research across three continents, speaking to the experts in the field, I still felt like someone would come to me and say that you don't know enough as a journalist. I felt like during Aaron Brockovich in the oil and gas industry doing a lot of investigative work that at some point I was still going to be too female, too young and too born free. As a young creative, I also was terrified of making my first real big move because you all know when you make your first big move, there's something by which you can be measured. And that in itself is terrifying. But it's been quite an interesting exercise preparing to speak to you today because I've actually had to go back and figure out what I did, how I went from the crying mess on the office floor to an award-winning film. And I've realised through the arduous process that has been the production on Earth of travelling across you know, the United States for five months on my own with nothing but a camera, documenting first-hand evidence of what's happening in gas drilling areas to debating against multinational corporations on international platforms, I've come to realise that I somehow made it, by the skin of my teeth perhaps, but I made it because I learned to trust my authenticity. And today I want to tell you how I did that. And because I'm the first speaker and because your minds are about to be blown away by the amazing lineup, I've made my topic really simple for you to remember. You have to trust your head, you have to trust your heart, and you have to trust your gut. So first up, trusting your head or trusting your mental capabilities or, or ability. You know, we live in the information age where the communication systems are so democratized that at a click of a button you can know just how little you know. At the click of a button, your great idea might have already been someone else's four years ago with 600 million views on YouTube. <laughs> I think the only way as a young creative or if you're entering a new space, the only way you can actually overcome this is to turn it on the other end and to use that kind of information at your disposal to fully immerse yourself in that topic. I fell asleep on data and reports and notes and textbooks more often than I did on my pillow in the last three years. My wall was a sticky note mess. I used to ask more questions and call people and Skype all the time because I was hungry to know and I wanted to be confident that at the end of the day I fully understood what is a very controversial issue and I wanted to understand all sides of the debate. You see, I think it's important mentally, if, you, if you're unraised mentally, if you're going to be able to measure up, is to know that the risk in not releasing your work or the risk in not um, letting go or sharing your idea is actually the greatest loss. If you don't release your work, if you don't let go, how could you ever develop and grow from there? And with Unearth in, in particular, I realised that as much as I wanted to hide under the coffee table because I was too scared that people were going to judge my cinematography or that people were going to judge my directing capabilities, that if I hadn't released Unearthed, it wouldn't be making the enormous impact on policy decisions that it's making in South Africa, in Europe and in the United States. Secondly, trusting your heart. 
What makes you the right person to tell that story? How do you know that you're going to represent your subject matters most appropriately? I think here I have my mom and my gran and my aunt to, to thank, and hopefully they'll watch this video someday. But my aunt left me these notes when I was very young, and only now I'm starting to understand what she meant. I think women have a really unique point of view and a really unique way of understanding the world. We can see it in a 60 more wide, and we can see it in a 200 more closer. We can be present without intruding, and we can understand without making someone feel that they're being exposed. We can be as open and vulnerable as the people in front of our lens. I remember a particular story when I was making a note I was in rural Pennsylvania, and I found a really poor family living in a gas drilling area who'd been heavily impacted by gas drilling. Their water was laced with heavy metals, their air contained VOCs that are known carcinogens and have a pretty severe impact on a nervous system. And it was at the end of the day, and there'd just been a thunderstorm, and Edna, the 91-year-old mom, reached for a frame off the wall, and she sat down and joined her two daughters on the couch. And in the frame was this beautiful photograph of her and her husband taken like 40 years back, and they were laughing, and it was a dance. Their husband, or their father, they had lost a year before due to cancer. Now, whether or not that was directly linked to the chemicals in their air or in their water supply, that's still being investigated. But at that moment, Jeannie, the younger daughter, took the frame and she was sitting on the couch and she started weeping. She said, Dad, I'm so sorry you shouldn't have gone that way. I'm so sorry that didn't have enough money to leave. I'm so sorry we didn't have enough money to do a water test to know what was going on. We should have known. And at that point, I put the camera off and I walked out of the room. That was enough. I knew in that moment it was more important for me to be human than it was for me to be a journalist or a cinematographer. I don't know if a male cameraman would have carried on filming and gained that amazing dramatic footage that you could run home to the producers and brag and say, look at this engaging content. I'm not sure. But at that stage, I knew that it was enough. And I think that's the greatest reward as a woman, is knowing when to be human, when to be humble, and when to be impeccably honest. And I think that trait has been the greatest reward, and I think it's something I can always fall back on. The third thing, that of trusting your gut. Oh, what a golden nugget. I promise I had no idea what this meant. My dad used to tell me when I was a kid, listen to your gut, trust your gut. And I'm like, Dad, are you going to do my science experiment or not? <laughs> I think, <laughs> but nothing quite reaffirmed my, <laughs> my trust or faith in having to trust your gut than forcing my poor editor to cut three feature films, three different versions of Unearthed. I was so terrified of releasing the film. My producer's upstairs, he's going to learn all about this now. But I scripted three different versions of Unearth, and I made my poor editor, Dan, cut them so at the end we could watch them all and go, which one do we like the most? Do you want to know which one we went for? The first one. <laughs> and I think therein lies the magic. I remember Dan and I picked up a permanent marker, and he was very angry, but very gracious. <laughs> we took a permanent marker, and we rode across that huge calendar with a glaring X on, on the schedule, marking the form completion. We wrote three words, always back yourself. And those are three words that I'll always repeat my, re re myself in my career. I think at the end of the day, there is something inside of you. There is that niggling voice that makes you wake up. Well, there is that original, that first thing that inspired your idea. And I can promise you that you need to look after that. You need to nurture that voice because that's what's going to steer the big ship at the end of the day. And when you've managed to line up your head, your heart, and your gut, I can tell you that you're going to, it's the most powerful position, the most powerful place you can find yourself. Because when you're there, nothing can shake you. The insecurities, the fears, they all dissolve. Because you know that in that point, at that place, that you're the most capable of telling that story. At that point, that place, that time in history, no one has the ability and that unique perspective that you have. And man, oh man, and that serenity, it's great because you just sit back and you just create. You just do. And you know what? It actually gets better. I've come to realize that through letters like those from Mina, that when you trust your authenticity, you allow others to do the same. And in this day and age of a bombardment of paparazzi flash, slab dash, print it while it's hot and consider the consequences later, the ability to arrive at work that's appropriate, that's been considered, whether the lyrics of a song that don't uh, describe the female form or photographs that's actually showing what's happening in the communities in South Africa, 
I want that sincerity there. I want to know that that artist or that creative was at some point also lying on the office floor with tears streaming down their cheeks, wondering how they were going to tell the story. What happened to genuine artworks? What happened to us measuring this point in this time in history and going, this is what we're experiencing, this is our issues, and these are honest reflections of where we are, and particularly in South Africa, 20 years later. What an amazing year. We should be having all kinds of content, all kinds of conversations around that content. I'm still the, fir I'm the first to acknowledge that I'm very young in my field and in many ways still figuring out why I pick up the camera or why I reach for a pen. But my experience has taught me that we need more people standing up and saying, here's my story. More people backing themselves and going, this is what I felt, this is what I think, this is one version of reality. And while that thought is terrifying in itself, like standing up here today, I think that that's the greatest thing that you can do, regardless of the outcome. Because when you face your fears, and when you trust your authenticity, you've already found the greatest currency, and that is simply your truth. Nothing less, nothing more. And that is everything. Thank you so much.